1972, I was a long-haired, pot-smoking, anti-Vietnam War demonstrating hippie. I had a friend whose father was the ranking colonel in the Denver Military District. My friend told me that his father regularly received lists of people's names. The point of the list was these were people who were supposed to be picked up by the military police in the event that martial law was declared. It seems that Army Intelligence uh, was in the habit of filming the anti-war marches and demonstrations, and then they would go through the film frame by frame and identify people in order to compile these lists. I was skeptical at first, but damn, if the next time I went to an anti-war march, there was a camera up on top of one of the buildings filming the whole march. And remember, this is 1972. The camera was as big as a suitcase, so it was hard to hide. I, I actually started thinking that my phone was tapped. Um, there was a distinct click on the line before the person I was calling or the person who was calling me began to speak. Rumors run around that the uh, camps that had been used by the government to intern the Japanese during the Second World War were being re, uh, redecorated to receive uh, the uh, leaders of the anti-war protest movement and anybody else that Nixon didn't like. I remember believing with a great deal of certainty that Nixon would never allow Congress to impeach him. I just assumed that sooner or later he would have the 82nd Airborne Division parachute into Washington, arrest Congress, suspend the Constitution, and declare himself King Dick. During this period, we had uh, high food prices, double-digit inflation, uh, riots, race riots in the cities almost every summer. There was two or three of them. The FBI were engaged in regular shootouts with the Black Panthers. There was a very real threat of all-out nuclear war, either with the Russians or the Chinese. The Cold War was still hot and heavy. John Kennedy had been assassinated shortly after Martin Luther King was assassinated. It was just a very chaotic, violent time. A lot more chaotic and violent than things are today. I will freely admit that I was freaked out. I uh, moved to a small uh, rural community with the idea of buying land and engaging in subsistence farming. I had a 380 automatic, a 1911 45 Colt, and a World War II vintage Enfield bolt action rifle. I assumed I would be shooting at the police, the FBI, or the army who would be coming to get me to send me off to those re-education camps <laughs> somewhere out in the Midwest. And then, to my great amazement and surprise, Nixon resigned and left office under his own power. The war came to an end. Blacks stopped shooting at policemen, started smoking crack, and started shooting at each other. By 1975, I had stopped smoking dope, and living in this backwater town just seemed idiotic. I took the money I had saved to buy land, moved back to the city, and used it to go to school. Recently, I've been watching a lot of prepper videos on YouTube, and it strikes me how much um, it all sounds familiar. The names have changed, of course. Japanese internment camps are now called FEMA camps. Fear of a repressive right-wing government 
has now been replaced by fear of a repressive left-wing government. Fear of blacks has been replaced by fear of Mexicans. The names have changed, but it's the same fear. It's the same thought pattern. It's, the, <laughs> it's just the same thing, all dressed up in new clothes. I admit that I am still, at this advanced age, susceptible to the prepper's disease. I have a friend who uh, seems to have access to a lot of arcane economic knowledge. He predicted the housing collapse a year before it happened. He saw the European debt collapse coming. And he is of the opinion that the governments of the world are simply going to print money until we are driven into hyperinflation to avoid the consequences of uh, de a deflationary depression, which even though uh, you know hyperinflation is no um, walk in the park, it's a lot less destructive than a deflationary um, spiral. Listening to him has certainly <laughs> pushed all my buttons. After a long uh, discussion one day about uh, the hyperinflation in Germany in the 1920s, I ran out and dug up my backyard so, and put in a garden. Um, now I own, uh, see, two rifles, a shotgun, four handguns, and a bulletproof vest. <laughs> I... I uh, told my wife that I was going to buy her a bulletproof vest for Christmas, and uh, she told me in no uncertain terms that if I ever expected to have sex again, I'd better not. So instead, I volunteered to uh, fix the closet doors in our bedroom, which will probably cost about as much money as the vest. <laughs> At one point, uh, I even owned a 50 caliber sniper rifle, which uh, I gave to a, a younger nephew who's, who also seems to have uh, the same paranoid delusions I do. Um, the, the gun was just too big and too heavy to haul around, and there was really no place close by that I could shoot the thing, which raises a very good point. I am old and fat. I am probably not physically fit enough to uh, survive even <laughs> the smallest uh, social disruption, let alone the uh, end of the world or, you know, the kind of things people are predicting. Interestingly enough, um, both my sons, who are in pretty good shape and young enough to actually have a chance of getting through such a thing, neither one of them has... Uh, the prepper's disease. Uh, after the movie The Road came out, I took them both to see it. And after the movie was over, I gave them each an assault rifle, a bandolier of ammunition, and a stack of silver coins. Within a couple of weeks, one of them had given the rifle back to me, saying he just didn't want a rifle it was too much of a pain in the butt to take care of. And the other one had gone out and cashed in all his silver coins to pay his gambling debts. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he has pawned the rifle I gave him also, but he's too ashamed to tell me that. Ah, being a parent, it makes me so proud. So here I sit in front of my computer listening to 20-something-year-olds go on about how we're going to be invaded by the Chinese or invaded by the Canadians or invaded by the UN or uh, be, you know, we got to be ready to kill armies of zombies. And I have to say the whole thing just seems crazy and nonsensical like they're all suffering from some yet undefined, uncatalogued form of mental illness. But then, five minutes later, 
I'm wondering whether or not I should actually put in the effort and dig a bunker in my backyard out, out beyond the raspberry bushes. It's all very confusing. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Good luck. These are hard times. <laughs> I hope we all make it through in good order. Thank you. Bye.